Vanessa, um, it's not often that I'm told I'm going to do the grown-up part, but I will do my best. Um, so welcome everybody to Green Corporate Energy 2011. It's good to see uh, many faces that are becoming familiar to us now. My, I'm Jim, and I, I uh, work on the content for the Green Monday programme, and I will guide you through to our close at 6 o'clock today. So what's the importance of today? Um, well, to us at Green Monday, energy efficiency is the cornerstone of an advanced sustainability strategy. The investment case is proven and growing. Leaders are consistently finding 10 million, 20 million, 50 million pound investment opportunities with three year paybacks. But major commercial opportunities are being missed and many companies are not preparing themselves for the future. And part of the challenge is, um, is language. Uh, this is yesterday's Financial Times. The, main, the lead article is, Economic growth must slow, warns the Bank for International Settlements. And it's largely an article about um, curbing inflation through rising interest rates. And if you look at it, I'll read one line out. It says, uh, rising food, energy and other commodity prices underscore the need for central banks around the world to begin raising interest rates. So implicit in that is an understanding that energy prices are rising. And it's not a minor trend, it's a mega trend, and one of the main shapers of economic policy. And when Jeremy Grantham, the chief investment officer at a $150 billion fund, <coughs> argues that rising energy and commodity prices are becoming the drivers of what he calls the great paradigm shift, that is what he's talking about. His argument is founded on population growth and climate change, but is presented in the language of economics and investment. Are the sustainability experts reading this language? Are the business experts recognizing the importance of sustainability to their business? And boards are undoubtedly being slow to wake up to this issue in the same way that many were slow to recognize the importance of the internet to the changing paradigm in the 1990s. But we'll see today that the leaders are generating better margins, higher revenues, more engaged staff, and enhanced corporate reputation. So our aim for today is to give you strategic inspiration around energy efficiency. We want to examine the big picture. Uh, we want to showcase leading thinking and leading strategies. And all of you have um, got a copy of the uh, white paper, which you should have been given as you came in. It's jam-packed full of case studies, strategy insights, and a detailed survey of 29 questions. We're very grateful to everybody who's fed into that. It nearly killed Georgie and me putting it together last week. Uh, and we hope it's really valuable to you. We sort of designed it to be very accessible, very readable. It's designed that if you wanted to put it to a senior board member to say, here's, here's proof that there are real opportunities in this space, that it would actually work for a um, CEO. So about today, um, we've got uh, a program taking us through to six. Um, we've got seven speakers. Each will speak for 10 to 20 minutes. We've got five panels, um, each with a different chair, and each chair and panel will, int will introduce themselves um, before a Q&A session led by the chair but open to the floor. So that's your <coughs> chance to ask questions. We have two round tables either side of the afternoon break. Each of those are 40 minutes. That's a chance for you to share ideas with people in your uh, sector and across sectors. Um, and we've asked that you record the three biggest outputs from those sessions and we'll pull them all together um, afterwards in a document for you. And um, you'll be pleased here we have three breaks during the day. Uh, we have a coffee session 10.30 to 11. We have lunch 12.20 to uh, 1.20. And we have afternoon refreshments 3.10 to 3.40. And we'll start promptly at the end of each session, so please um, uh, be there on time. Now, finally, I just want to thank our sponsors. 
Um, we've got two main sponsors for today, without whom it wouldn't have been possible to do it. Um, Utilix, uh, we're particularly grateful to Chris Bowden and Ashley Daffin. And to Linklaters, we're very grateful to uh, Vanessa, who you've met earlier. And we've got a number of partners and exhibitors, who, uh, too many to mention here, but they're all on your programme and they're on the slides as well. And uh, finally, a personal thanks to Steve Barker from Siemens, who's put in a lot of work with us um, on the survey, the white paper, and has provided a technology matrix, which is in all of your white papers, which you can just use to assess an array of different technologies. Now, our keynote speaker today is not here. Um, <coughs> if, if he was, he, he'd be called Michael Liebrich, and we're hopeful that he will be here Soon, we are. We are. He's not here yet, but we are. Okay, we, we remain hopeful, but we luckily have an extremely flexible format um, and a very flexible friend in Robin, um, who uh, um, we're just going to move forward into Michael's slot and then hopefully we can slot Michael in later on. Um, Robin is um, the finance director at Siemens Industries UK. Uh, we wanted him to speak for two reasons. Firstly, He's a finance director with a substantial P&L. He manages uh, 1.3 billion euros in revenues. And secondly, he's from Siemens. Uh, and Siemens would undoubtedly be on our shortlist for the best sustainability strategy globally. They generate over, oh, in just purely energy efficiency revenues, they generate 15 billion um, globally. And uh, <clears throat> they've got a very impressive internal energy efficiency strategy, which they're now extending to their supply chain, which I think is uh, probably, again, showing leadership. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Robin and ask him to tell us how energy efficiency has meant higher, rev higher revenues and uh, better margins. Oh, 